we're back for the What They Don't See series, an inside look of where creatives create. This is episode four. We are meeting up with Blake Pinsker, a past guest of the Purpose and Youth podcast for episode 87, I believe. He is the brand director at Movement. If you're not familiar with Movement, uh, do you live under a rock? I don't know. Uh, Movement is an incredible company. They have these incredible watches and, and now uh, sunglasses, and it's this whole live life on your own terms. Actually, we're rocking the watch right there. Shout out to the Movement. Uh, but I connected with Blake about a year and some change ago. Have been in communication with him since. He's an awesome dude, high energy, fellow bearded brother. So today he is gonna give us a walkthrough of the Office of Movement. Shout out to the car and their alarm going off. Not a big fan of that, but it's gonna be a great episode. So episode four with what they don't see, Blake Pinsker, there, AKA Blake EP, AKA a fellow bearded brother. Let's get it. How long have you guys been in this spot? Two years, three? Two years? Yeah. yeah we used to be like in a little shoebox before this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In an apartment before Oh, I this. know. I know. That's crazy. Yeah. This I, area is great, though. Yeah, of course. Are you Everything's kidding me? walking distance. How far do you live from here? You're down in uh, Playa Vista? Yeah. yeah. So, so you're not that far. Right down there by the beach. Eight minutes, yeah. minute can you? Yeah. Little puppy. Come on. Uh, uh, yep. uh, 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 what are we up to today? <laughs> Blakey P getting blacked up. We're back. Yeah, so this has been amazing just to get a nice walk through and see where you guys operate. Because the whole inspiration for me wanting to start this series is that we see all these, we see all the end results. We see the products rolling out online, in your case with movement. We see all the collaborations. We see all the cool shit happening. But what we don't see a lot is what's happening behind the scenes. You're gonna have a million creators out there making content for movement brand. We're gonna see it. It's gonna look great, it's gonna look professional, but I think there's so much to be said about the behind the scenes to humanize people like yourself. Like, yes, you've worked to get to this point in your life, but you are a human that shows up and works and does what he has to do and sends emails and goes to the bathroom and eats. And so I think what has been amazing about this series is humanizing the people that maybe we don't see on the front lines every day, but showing they're just like any of us, doing what they gotta do to get by and to, to build that thing up. Oh, no doubt, man. I'm, yeah. the, I'm just like anybody watching this. Yeah. Anybody who's been to college and not been the smartest kid in the world. Yeah. Anybody who's been rejected from jobs. Anybody who went to interview after interview and nobody really thought anything of them. Yeah. I actually went and interviewed at my dream company, thought was dream company, Quest Nutrition, mm. like five or six years ago. Right after you graduated. Thought I crushed it. I actually met Tom Bellyu. Wow. And I didn't know who he was at the time. I knew he was like the founder of Quest, but Quest didn't hire me. And I was devastated. Because yeah. it was this growing company. And I thought I crushed the interview. They didn't give me a shot. And I think everybody watching this has probably had their fair share of rejection, mm. whether it be from jobs, girls, guys, family, whatever it is. But there's always that next opportunity around the corner, and that's what this is for me. Yeah. It's that next opportunity. And when I got that opportunity, I wasn't going to let it slip. How many employees do you guys have right now? Yeah, like 40-something. Yeah. 40-something employees? When we first met, we probably had 20-something. So. Damn. It's been... Yeah, I mean, the, the podcast was, uh, I looked, that published in May. So I think we recorded that either the end of, uh, end of April or it, it came, out, came out May, yeah. uh, May 20th. Yeah. Our, court, our colors are black and red. Yeah. Like our main colors. This was all orange. So we're like, all right, we'll make the best out of it. We paint this mural. I was going to say, who did, who did the actual mural? This is a guy named James Haunt. He's wow. a dope muralist. Uh, he came through. Did this in like 24 hours. Wow. Yeah, because this was just white 
And we're like, all right, we got to do something here. Yeah. We want like LA with the palm trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get something with our sunglasses. I love how you guys got the the whole shelf for books. Great. I just read this <laughs> from the third door. That's a great book. Oh, this is Bobby's favorite right here. Which one? This one right here. Girl boss? How'd you know? Yeah, don't Sh shoot all the spark though? notes. Okay. You guys be doing some good Have you reading. read this? Yeah, I just finished that one like Incredible. a month and a half ago. So I first started this book mm -hmm. and I, I couldn't get into the beginning. But then I took a day and I just started listening to the audio book. Yeah. And I walked for five hours. Five wow. hours. I couldn't stop yeah. listening. Yeah. And now I'm like obsessed with the story. Yeah, it gives you some perspective because you would oh, think Nike, oh, the guy just started the company right. and it went off the ground and it, it was running. But nah, he, he put a lot of effort into right. that. Do you ever come out here and nap? To <laughs> this is uh, it's our boy Jake. Jake. You know, even when he's traveling, his presence is always felt. <laughs> he, he bows to you. <laughs> It's very funny. What, did, uh, what was the story behind this being made? Uh, I think Robbie just, you know, you guys know Robbie. Robbie yeah, yeah. is our social media coordinator. He, did like he just did it as a joke. Yeah. He's like, yo, I'm just going to troll Jake super hard. That's like, Robbie will park in his parking spots and all kinds of stuff. Is this, so is this what you so guys just, like, this overlook is, new products? This is or? A, it actually, I sneak, I told you a sneak peek on this, I think, when one of our interviews. I was like, we're working on jewelry. Oh, yeah. Maybe I might have yeah. mentioned that. I think you might As we've seen today, like walking around this office, it's amazing. The facility's great. There's a lot of things happening. You got the designers, you got the puppies operations, you got everywhere. puppies running around. <laughs> there's coffee, there's all this stuff. But, you know, thinking back, and, and we touched on it, of those early days of you guys in the apartment, there's four or five of you. What was, what do you think got you guys to keep moving forward to get you to this point today? Like, what was the thing, what was the conversation what was the true motivation that yeah. we're going to build this thing into a monster? I think we all were very aware of the opportunity at hand. My previous job, which I, I spoke of on our interview, yeah. was miserable. Yeah. I tasted misery. I tasted lack of creative freedom. I tasted what it felt like to be treated like shit by employers. Yeah. Jake, founder of Movement, was terrified of working for somebody else. And he al already had a business that failed. And so when we all came together, although we were young, we all realized that the opportunity at hand to create this life that we, you know, two years before I started a movement, like I couldn't even see that this was, this was a possibility. I was, I was just so not in a good place. And so coming here, at that early stage, working together with like your, your boys, like we had a chip on our shoulder and we just wanted to prove that the traditional way of doing things wasn't the only way. Yeah. Before we fired up the cameras, you were talking about burnout and that was something that we, mm. me and Jake had talked about during our podcast right within the first 30 seconds. What, talk to me about that. What, what's, how, you know, how has that process been know, for you? As, as a lot of those burnout days were happening, when is this about? People would say that, like, you, dude, you got to chill. But that's what we wanted to be doing at that time. Mm. That's what made us happy. Like, I was talking about how we used to come in here Saturday, Sunday, because I didn't like being in my apartment. You know, have air conditioning in my apartment. Come in here, we just hang out, work, shoot some hoops. And that was fun. But looking back, what I was doing was sacrificing stuff that is really important to me. In the long term, I was sacrificing on uh, time for myself. And uh, yeah, it's just something that like, I've, I've really like, come to. Like, there's, there's a lot of time during the week, mm -hmm. and it doesn't have to all be spent on one thing. Yeah. Having said that, like, looking back, like, I think you know, we, we got here for a reason, and I think extreme burnout sometimes is necessary. Yeah. You, know, you, don't, you don't hear that a lot. But, like, there is something to outworking everybody. And at that stage, we didn't have all the money in the world. Yeah. We didn't have the relationships yet. Yeah. But what we had was time. Yeah. And the corporate companies, the, the big uh, Goliath companies we were going up against, they were probably coming in nine, nine to five. But we were a small team. And so to 
have more output than them, we had to work harder and work more. And yeah. so that was just, sometimes process. it's just in the name of the game. Yeah, that's the only way you're going to yeah. really grow something to right. that scale. And I think for, with the podcast, it's the same. Yeah. Like the way you produce content is in a similar way where like you're trying to burst onto the scene, be a top podcast in your category. Mm -hmm. In order to do that, you're going to have to outwork the guys that are on top right now. Yeah. You might get to a point where like, like now, you know, I, I travel more, yeah. take more time for family. I go on dates. Yeah. Before, that was like not really a thing. Um, I feel like I'm looking at myself in two years from now, right now. Yeah. Like I, I, everything yeah. you're talking about, like, I mean, my family's on the East Coast, no dates, no like real adventurous stuff here and there. Um, but I, I, that's the thing to me. It's like, I just feel like it's, you just have to put in a couple of those years of the tough times. Yeah. And then there's a flip of the chapter where you can start to. When we got, we got lucky because there was a real flip of the switch. Like the acquisition was yeah. kind of that where. Yeah. That's almost a year ago now too. Uh, it was just telling Bobby, like it's weird when you hit your short term goals much sooner than you ever thought you would. Yeah, as you, as you can see, sometimes it's a little hard to focus. So this is my spot. I pretty this, much just use this it. You, this pro, this I pretty much just use it for my calendar. Mm. I don't actually like September's post up here. Yeah, good. but I, you know, I keep it real with the San Diego State. Got to represent New York Jets. Patriots. We got a rivalry going. Oh, oh, One of my favorite business books of all time. Tool of the Titan, Tim Ferriss. Tim Ferriss is. This is just filled with so many little nuggets. Yeah. And he's, some. He's like the human hack. He's the man. I mean, the the people he interviews in this book are. The best of the best. Are you a fan of his podcast? Oh, I love his podcast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's a go. Yeah. Anything specific on this desk that is special to you for any reason? Or is it just all little pieces and reminders? My Jets helmet, is, yeah. you know, I've had this since I was a kid. It's a little dusty now, but uh, this is my team. It reminds me of family. It reminds me of my dad. Oh. It reminds me of my childhood. This was uh, a very special launch. This was a Sam Colder's line, who's a, a, a good friend of mine and obviously one of the faces of our brand. Yeah. And this launch was much deeper than the product. I talked about it when I was interviewed on your show yeah. because it was tied to his story about his brother yeah. passing away. Yeah. And the slogan was, uh, live every day like it's your last. Yeah. And so people were impacted on a much deeper level than just the product. Yeah. And we, had, we hadn't done a collab to that point. So we were like, okay, does this, is it gonna sell or is it just gonna be cool content? This thing sold out in like 24 hours. Wow. So this is I think what's really amazing is the relationships that you guys have had with the creators that you still work with today. The Sam Colders, the Jeremiah Davis, the Matt Comos, the Jacob Riglins. How inspiring is it for you to not only see movement grow, but then these creators completely grow? Like the fact that you found Sam at 20,000 Instagram followers to now he's over, I don't know, million and a half. I mean, it's not just about the numbers, but it's just showing you that there has been progress. What's inspired you the most about working with these that, guys? That was my mindset the whole time. Yeah. Here are these young guys that I'm inspired by who are trying to really carve the, the path as modern day entrepreneurs. Mm. It's not necessarily someone running a big business. They are running their own business. And they're like, people think they're just going around taking pictures, like living the dream. What, what if you go travel with these guys, they're working. Yeah. Like it, and I mean, like it's a business. Um, and I respect the hell out of them. And so when I met a Jacob, a Sam, a Jeremiah, my whole pitch to them was like, let's grow together. I think Sam and movement hit 1 million followers around the same time. That was in, insane. Jacob, I've known since he was 19. Um, Jeremiah is now shooting our biggest brand campaign of all time right now that we're, we're shooting this summer. And these are guys like I went to Hawaii with them mm -hmm. right after I inter our interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I, one, of, mind, yeah, right? one of the things I mind. said was like, guys, I was like, this isn't like when I first sit across the table from people, like they're, they're a little bit skeptical. Like, what does this guy have to offer? He's just a brand. Yeah. My mindset has always been like, 
the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years, 40 years, we're going to be friends and we're going to help each other grow. And like it, it was never about like, oh, let's just do this campaign. It was always like, you're going to be someone in my life yeah. because I see that you're a hustler. I see that you're so innovative and business minded and creative. And that, those are the type of people I want to surround myself with. Yeah. And I'm lucky enough to get to do that as part of my <laughs>
$30,000 a year. When I first took the job at Movement, I was making 36K a year. Before that, you were just like, it, was, it, was, it was, the, wasn't before that, it was just 200 bucks a week or something when you were still working? Yeah, yeah. Uh, when it was on, like, we, me and Spencer split like a few hundred dollars a month. And that was the best decision I've ever made because what I was able to learn at that stage was worth so much more than any paycheck. Yeah. That's going to like put me in a position to continue to build the rest of my life. And so many people now, like they, they would never work for that. Mm. Um, so I think that's huge. Like if you're trying to figure things out, and I know, you know, Gary Vee says it all the time, like go work for free. You're not just working for free. You're exchanging your time for knowledge rather than change, exchanging your time for a job that looks good on paper. Maybe you make, you know, 60K, 70K a year. It's like, oh, I have a good salary compared to my friends. But you're not learning shit. You're doing bitch work. You're, that's that. You're going to look back in 10 years, and your resume that you thought you were building, like, is not really built. And so that would be the, the biggest thing I would tell myself is, like, just trade. Don't worry about money, which I don't think I did at that stage. Yeah. I was living at my dad's house for a while. Like, um, don't worry about money and go soak up as much knowledge, information, read books, listen to podcasts as you possibly can because 20 to, to 30 is a long time. Yeah. Long, long time. And the scary part is, is that when we graduate or we're in those early 20s, we think we have to have it all figured out. And right. I think that's when, I think right. when you get to around 22, that's when you have all the tools. And I think from 22 to 30 should be the time where you start rolling the dice right. and you start just going all in on the ideas. Yeah. And at that early stage, you have pressure from parents. You also have pressure because like, oh, my friend has this good job and uh, my girlfriend's getting paid this. And so like you feel insignificant, but that's all just your ego. Your ego saying like, I am insecure about where I at, am at in my career, where I'm at financially. Yeah. Unless you give, you give a shit about that, the better you're going to be because you're going to be making the right decisions, not monetary decisions that actually aren't going to pay as much as taking less up front. Second thing. <laughs> this one's big and I've been talking about this a lot. When you're, when I was young, and this is something I really realized, especially since starting the podcast. Mm -hmm. And I think you at your core are Bobby always. Like when I have met you, like I've never seen you different. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of people who think that they're going to be made off their perception. What other people think about them, not truly who they are. So they're trying to be something they're not. Perception won't make you. You'll make you. You being unique and authentic and different, that's what's going to make you. And that's one thing I realized with the podcast. Like, I was almost containing who I really was because like, I, was, Afraid. I was like trying to kind of appease like certain audiences. And then I was like, screw that. Like, yeah. I'm, I am going to what's good. I'm going to be my only shot at this. Like yeah. me being my most authentic, true self, which sometimes you might hate it. Yeah. You might love it. I might say stuff that maybe is offensive. You intro the podcast but, the other day. What's up, motherfucker? Yeah, I was but dying. Same, I was like, that's Blakey P. But that's you. And that's, that's what you. It fun. Is like yes. when you can be your true self and what ends up happening, maybe you do get made off perception. Maybe you put on this whole persona of who you think you should be to get where you want in life. Those are the people that end up miserable. You might be sitting on millions of dollars but you don't even know who you are. You can't be yourself and you're never going to be happy that way. Yeah. I'd rather be poor in myself than rich in somebody who I can't even look in the mirror. We're going to end it at that, Blakey P. This has been, honestly, man, like guy. an honor. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for you're taking the, man. the time, Thank man. Thank you for coming. The love is, uh, the love is mutual and I'm, I'm just so fucking fired up with this one, man. This has been great. This has been awesome to get, Thank you. see what happens behind the scenes of movement. You guys are crushing it and uh, the bearded brothers. My guy. I'll never forget. I brought it the, back for you. The, the <laughs> podcast, the, the first, when we were going into the intro of, that, of the podcast, you said, for today, it's the Bearded Brothers. Yeah. And I was like, this is how I know this yeah. is my guy. Because he's just laying down the foot. He's it's not always on my mind. That's how, I, that's how you know you brand yourself very well. Because yeah. whenever I was thinking about the full beard, I was always thinking about Bobby. <laughs> and I was like, yo, when I start growing this, I've got to make sure to tell Bobby what's up. 
I sent him a selfie the other day. Yeah, I was like, yo, let's go. It's going down. <laughs> That's it. Well, yeah. they don't see episode four, ladies and gentlemen. Blakey P. Thanks, Director of Movement. Let's get it. Chill. Oh, I was